Well, I've uh, taken this all apart, I've cleaned it, and I'm starting to put it together again now. So we start off with the four base units, and the T-junction here comes up to part of a curly tube here. With enough sections of this you can get like, a big spiral going on, but I'm only using two sections in this setup. We've got bungs in here, in this uh, join, because it's going male to female, you've got to switch it around. Um, another T-junction, so here we've got just a little middle. This is a ceramic tile because it's summer now and if it gets warm uh, it's something cool they can lie down on to cool down because overheating is a big problem for mice. That's more harmful for them than getting too cold. And we have the wooden castle and this little puzzle toy which they really enjoy. You'll see in one of the videos. I'll move around the toys each muck out so they're a different place and it gives us something new to look at. I've got a wicker ball here and I filled that with some monkey nuts in the shell. They're not salted, they're just plain, the ones you would uh, get for eating yourself in the snack aisle. And this is a new toy with some little bells on. A little bell all there. Uh, this is the remainder of a whimsy, which is um, it's supposed to look like a little alligator, but they've already chewed most of it now. Uh, that's actually a dog chew toy. It's a vegetarian one made with sort of plant uh, products. And it's like a little chew toy. This is for the small dog's version, which is quite little, as you can see, it's only right next to my hand. Uh, and I've just smeared a little bit of uh, malt paste on there as a treat. I've got a wooden log, another little roll tube. Uh, I try to make sure there's something wooden to chew on in each bit. I've always got to have plenty to chew on. Uh, egg box, which I just cut the corners out of. Uh, wooden chew toy. Uh, this is a uh, basically a corner toilet. I used to use it as a food bowl. But they started using food bowl as a toilet anyway, so I thought, right, let's change this over. Uh, and I'm going to use it as a toilet. This is the second um, look out they've had this, they're starting to get the idea. And this jug, uh, I've decided to use as a food bowl instead, so you can see we've got some lovely food in there. Very delicious home mix. Another castle, that's some fiddle sticks. There's an archway, another tile there, so they can make a nest under there to be cool. So that is the first level. Now what I've also got from the other levels, also ceramic, is this uh, clean, unused oil burner. Uh, now you mustn't use one that's ever had oil in it because essential oils can sort of co cause harm to them. So this one I bought brand new at a shop and I can put some food treats and things in the top as a food bowl and then I can use the bottom bit as a nest. So I'll put a bit of uh, shredded toilet paper in there. And you'll notice on warm days they prefer using that one than the snuggly nest they've made that they use on the cold days. So now I'm going to do the next level. Right, something I'm going to show you as well is because uh, mice uh, can sometimes have difficulty climbing. Now I'm putting the lids on. You'll see underneath there's an elbow joint there. Um, I could use mouse ladders, which you'll see I use on some of the other levels, but for this I make sure that underneath there's always something they can climb on. My hand. <laughs> um, to make sure that they can actually climb up. So if you now look underneath, you can step onto the castle and then up here and out here. Um, I also have what you call mouse ladders, which are these, and they're specially designed to go with this. So what you can do, and I can't do it on this because all of these got elbow joints on, is they hook through. Now you'll see on the other levels that I use these to climb up. Now you also can do, if you have a hamster, you can do vertical tubes straight up, but mice um, can't actually shimmy up the vertical tubes and the hamsters can because they're a little bit smaller. Uh, and that's why you need these mouse ladders. So when, it, when you're putting it together, never do vertical uh, pipes. Uh, do it at a slope, gentle slope, or use elbow joints that they can climb up to, or use the mouse ladders. Now, the other thing is wheels, stopping wheels from squeaking. Now, this is road stack wheel hub assembly here. So, we've got the hub, we've got this uh, little pressure fitment, and we have a clean wheel. Now, what I tend to do, I'm moving around a lot here, I realise, is get a little bit of lard. The reason I use lard rather than anything else is because it's edible, it's food safe. If they do get to it, not doing them any harm. Obviously if they eat a lot of it, then they get the squits, but that'll be the worst that happens. So I've got a little bit of lard on this tissue, a bit of kitchen roll. And I'm going to smear it over the hub, just like that. 
wipe off the excess. Now I have another piece here. This is a, quite a rare piece actually that you, they don't make anymore. It's quite difficult to find. This is um, called a roundabout and it's got a little pin hub here. So I'm just going to oil that pin hub as well. Now the fixed wheels, which you can see one just in there, you can oil those as well. A little bit more tricky, you've got to really pull quite firmly at the centre of the hub. I'm not going to do it now because I can't do it with one hand. Uh, and you can take that off and you can grease that. But they don't tend to seize up very much. They tend to be fairly free-flowing anyway. Uh, let's, let's make sure there's enough on there. Let's slide that just over there. Push that on. And then give it a roll. Make sure that it's going okay. Uh, this is the other part of the roundabout. You see it's got a tiny little thing there. Sometimes it's easy to do this upside down. But um, as you can see there, you can see through to where it is. Filming and doing this at the same time, not so easy. You can see straight over. <laughs> not again. Oh, I could do with another pair of hands here. And the other half is not here this week. And again, give it a spin. You see it's silent. Not a sound. And very free spinning. This one. Not a sound. So if you do have this in your bedroom or in your child's bedroom, um, they're not going to be kept awake at night by that. Only by other playing sounds that might happen. Okay, it's going to show you some of the bits of putting this together. This is very simple. It's got two little legs underneath it. So just make sure they're within the boundaries of the disc. It'll be a bit quite gentle because those legs are quite fragile. And then it sits at an angle there so any droppings will roll down there. Just make sure everything turns freely. Now the bedding I'm using is this. Uh, I'll keep it in a bucket because there's a big bale out in the shed. So the bucket's easier. Now this is uh, called Orbios. You can also get Hemcor. Uh, they're both pretty much the same thing. Now this is a special bedding that was designed for horses that have uh, respiratory problems like COPD and allergies. So it's hypoallergenic, uh, it's highly absorbent and it uh, absorbs I think is about 10 times um, the amount that wood shavings would. Now wood shavings are not good for rodents, it will give them respiratory problems so you mustn't use that. So look for something like this. There are other options as well. Have a look at somewhere like ratrations.com and they've got various beddings available. And this is where I get this from. You can buy it in various amounts. Now I tend to get a bale, which is literally the size of a bale. And it will last you ages, depending how many you've got and how big your setup is and how often you look out. It could last you about a year, one bale. So I'll just put a scoop or just under a scoop in. Spread it around, make sure it's in all the corners. A bit more in that one. There we go. There we are. So that will absorb a lot of moisture and it will also lock away odours very well so you do not get uh, a mousy smell. It is absolutely brilliant, the best bedding I've ever found. Um, the advantage is when you muck out, even though it might be with the size of the setup, which you'll see at the end, is actually two weeks between muck outs, and even then there is no smell. And also with three mice and them urinating, you know, for that two weeks, you do not find a single wet spot because this stuff clumps together and locks away the wetness and holds it. So when you come to muck out, you just tip it out and everything just comes out loose. You don't have clumps really to get rid of. Next, I'm going to do something here. So I'm just going to do that and clear a little bit of floor space there. The reason being, what I'm about to put on is this with a wheel. You can see that sort of lines up over there. Again, doing this one-handed isn't easy because you see I've got little clips on there. So I need to make sure it's under the clips. Just make sure I can feel them. Both on the outside, yeah. So that wheel now can turn freely. It's difficult trying to do this actually through the bars that you can check that it can actually spin. Yeah, there you go. Um, because if it was sitting on the bedding, it would jam and it wouldn't be spinning and obviously that's no fun for them, is it? Um, this one I'm going to be putting on here. So it's just sitting over the pins. 
Uh, I've got that the wrong way around. I just realised because that's going to do that. Right, let's go around there. Put the pipe between those two. So many different ways you can set this up. And I mentioned mouse ladders earlier. This one needs a mouse ladder. So we took that in there. Now obviously you need to check this every day because it's not impossible for them to accidentally just knock those off. Um, and then they won't be able to get up or down the level so easily. Um, there's also the reason why I've got a lot of water bottles around. Uh, I've actually got four, is it five water bottles on this setup at the moment. And that's to make sure A, that if one gets blocked or develops a problem or leaks out, there's always a backup water bottle. You never want to have just one water source for your animals because they can dehydrate very, very quickly, even in space, you know, just overnight when you're asleep. If they run out of water just as you go to sleep, by the time you get up in the morning, they could be like in serious trouble. Um, so I've always make sure I've got enough water bottles at various levels. Um, so there's always ones they can get to, even if there's an accident and they've like blocked off a tube or something or knocked a ladder out, they've got an alternative they can get to. Right, so I've put this tube in now. Now you see what I've done is we've got um, the short tube with a gnaw ring. These metal gnaw rings are very important because they stop your pet from chewing on the plastic, which obviously if they ingest that could be very bad for them. And also it messes up the plastic. Uh, so we've got an elbow joint, then a long one. Now because we're going to do the same and their big end, little end, you have to change the direction. So this piece in the middle here is uh, basically something that will flip so you can put like male to female, female to male and switch it round. So you want to make sure you've got a few of these. It's something that you can pick up on eBay if you want some spares. Um, it's useful to have quite a lot of them because it lets you get very creative with the tubes. The other thing that you can do is what I did in the middle here I showed earlier because uh, that's effectively changing the direction because these can only be one way and so that means they can join up effectively. If you've got shelves and things, this is something useful you can do. Uh, is you can make use of uh, different levels, like I've got a corner of the mantelpiece here, this fireplace has been decommissioned so I can't use it anyway. So what I've done is put one of these little boxes on the back with a bung here that you can put a water bottle in, and this is a dining room for them. Um, I like to put a couple of uh, food bowls around the place so they've got to go hunting and looking for the food, or you can actually scatter it in the substrate so they can forage for it, which fulfils their natural instincts. Now again I've done this double elbow thing with the uh, direction changer in the middle. Now on each um, drum I've got two clips, these are short clips. You also get the long clips which stretch from here over to here when you've got one of these on. So I'm just going to make sure that all the clips are on. It doesn't really matter too much if they're not. Um, it's just extra security but obviously if they're not on you can accidentally lift stuff off. And we're going to put some more mouse ladders in. As you can see here, this needs a mouse ladder. And over here, this needs a mouse ladder. So they can now get up to all of the levels. So it's coming together now. Now something else that mice like is nesting. It really fulfills their instincts. So what I've got here is literally just some roll. Clean up the roll that I've just shredded, just pulled apart. Now I'm going to shove that in that toy there. Now they're not necessarily going to nest in that, it's a bit small. But what they're going to love doing is pulling that paper out and dragging it all around the cage and making the, mess, the nest that they want, and a mess actually. Uh, this I picked up, I think pets at home, I picked up a pack of two of them. Now it's a little book, literally designed for hamsters and mice to chew on to tear the paper out. As you can see they've been having lots of fun with this one already. And it's all completely safe for them, there's no harmful glue in there, it's all sort of edible for them. And that's something I can put somewhere, I might put it up here, for example. And they will drag that around and tear it around and pull things out of it and have a whale of a time. Now, one of the toys I've got, in fact, a few of the toys I've got are actually fish tank toys that lend themselves really well um, to being mouse toys. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm kind of going to put a bit of bedding in it as well. Um, and we've also got other toys like this is a, a Rotostack chew. Rotostack actually sent me a packet of these for free because one of the new pieces I bought, and these are mostly second hand, some of them were new, but it was one of these bedroom pods that I bought brand new when I first got the setup where the lid didn't actually fit properly into the top. Uh, so I contacted Rotostack, they sent me out a replacement uh, and also sent me out a complimentary pack of treats for them as well, which you can hang from the bars on the inside, which I shall do. I quite enjoy chewing on those. 
So as you can see, I'm nearly done here. Just a few more toys to put in. So I'm going to have this here. Put some bedding in there as well and some treats in the top. Now I've got some bedding in there now. Um, I think that happens to be over there. Now I've put a little uh, treat bowl in here as well. So let's, let's get a random little assortment of treats. You don't want too much, so most of these will hand feed. But the good thing you can leave enough for them to chew on. Is these are actually dog treats in the pick and mix bins at pets at home. And I particularly like things like these. Uh, sometimes they just eat the outside, but either way it keeps them entertained. Sometimes different ones they really enjoy. Uh, seems like them too many, but uh, it's certainly a little treat that they like having. Now, another treat, it's going to sound really weird, but mice actually really like, and it's good for them, is goldfish flakes. Sounds crazy, I know, but it's a nice little treat for them. So, I'm going to sprinkle a couple of them in there, not too much. All can go up there for them to find later. And now I'm going to sprinkle a few little treats, just a couple in there. Got some Cheerios as well. And things we've got in here is we've got uh, banana chips, which I've broken up into tiny mouse sized pieces. These are yogis, yogis, which are actually an American treat, which a friend of mine sent from America. Little yogurt drops, which are some mice love. These are plain Cheerios, all they are. There's also some dog chocolate drops or mouse chocolate drops, which again you can break in half because they don't need them to be that big or break them to quarters. And we also have like puffed rice, pumpkin seeds. They love pumpkin seeds. That is a favourite. Sure there's one of those in there. Obviously, they also like mealworms. You can have live mealworms or you can have dead, dried mealworms, by the way. So there's some favourite mousey treats there. And uh, this is the mouse food. This is a home mix. Uh, I've got a big tub of it, and this is the little tub I have uh, for topping up the food bowl with. Now, I get my supplies from ratrations.com. I tend to use the number seven with egg biscuit, uh, and then mix in some other straights. I've got meadow herbs, seeds, uh, and so, so many things. I'll have to do an actual video on that sometime to show you how I mix up. In fact, I'm due to mix up the mouse food soon, so. I'll mix up another batch and I'll do a video on that. As you can see it looks very appetising. And we don't really get much wastage. When you, you'll need to check this frequently. And when you've got natural food like this, which is a lot of seed cases, which are kind of wild mouse natural food, you'll think that the food bowl's still fairly full. But in reality, it's going to be a lot of seed cases. They've eaten the middle, so you need to make sure you tip out those seed cases and refill it uh, with some fresh food because it can be misleading. This is the bedroom pod, which sometimes they use, sometimes they don't, and it's got the clear top that you put on there. I've got a few different colours. Now, I've tried to get some toilet paper in there, which is one of my favourite types of bedding. They might use it, or they might they might sleep in there, I think, or they might just drag it out and make their own nest somewhere else, which they prefer. Now, sometimes I make that the hay loft, and I put some hay in there. Now, the important thing to remember with hay is that they can get mites from it. So what you want to do is get out... Um, a you know enough that you're going to use for the next muck out put it in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer for 24 to 48 hours and that will make sure that any mite eggs that are on it have been killed because uh, i use well i keep my hay in the shed and at my old place that was fine because obviously it's cold out there it got frozen in the winter and i never had a problem now at my new place my shed i actually have to keep my mobility scooter in it because i'm disabled uh, which means I have to keep it warm. I've got a little heater that keeps it just above freezing so the battery doesn't freeze. And the problem with that is, of course, the hay hasn't frozen. So when I've got some lovely organic meadow hay from actually the field behind my house, I ended up with mites getting some mice. Uh, some, try again. The mice getting some mites. <laughs> um, so what I have to do now is take out a portion and put it in the freezer. Now, A, I've forgotten to do that <laughs> this time. So I'm just going to go with... Uh, with that but they do enjoy the meadow hay because they get to nibble it as well as nest in it um what you can also use is raffia and you can use that uh, in sort of toys for them as well now raffia is quite expensive to get from pet shops and this as you can see this is where i got it from heavy horse leg oil supplies um you can see they are www.shireoil.com 
come, I got this at Shy Horse Show, um, because it's actually a lot cheaper. With Shires they use it when they're doing the plaiting uh, in the mounts and tails. So you get a massive big twist of it like this, and this is going to last forever. I can snip this up uh, and make little bundles of raffia for them, which I love tearing apart. It's a really good thing. So if you want cheap raffia, go to these guys. They're really good. Um, I believe they do you know, delivery as well. Um, and order some, and it's a really nice toy for your pets. And you can see all of my mouse stuff here at the moment, actually. We've got the, the toy castle they can play on and the free ranging. There's some treats that my friend sent me from America. And there's some more toys in there from zooplus.com. There's like mealworms, there's a little treat puzzle toy. Some of these things I've seen in my other videos that you can put treats in, and a mouse has to move those things to get them. Um, I've got malt paste which although it's marketed for ferrets uh, mice absolutely love this it's like mouse cocaine i gotta be careful with that because i'm actually really allergic to malt so i can't have it touch my skin so i feed it from the tube i've also got some egg biscuits which we're going to put uh, one of these in actually we've got the travel box down there which i've always got a travel box set up ready just in case the mouse needs to go to the vet uh, always have a travel cage like ready just to grab and if there's a fire or something in the house you need to get out fast uh, well technically you shouldn't really um, wait around but if you need to go somewhere quickly it's good to be able to quickly grab your pets and go if you have to um, so I've also got a travel cage there which has got a little wheel on it uh, keeps them entertained if you've only got one or two mice you can use that to put them in when you're mucking out because uh, I've got a few more I use that as my muck out cage there's my spare cage over there uh, in here I've got uh, my treatments. It's a bit messy in here at the moment. So I've just dumped a lot of stuff in. I've got my cage cleaner. I've got my treatments. I've got um, various medicines and things for them. Spare wheels, spare water bottles, all sorts of things like that. That's a food shelf. So this one I'm going to refill with some more mouse food. At the back is all the main ingredients. Chocolate drops. There's a spare bung if I need to quickly bung something off. Uh, spare wheels, spare toys. This is a cat toy which mice really love. It's got some catnip in and it's got a feather tail. They love pulling the feather tail out. They think that's great fun. I've not put it in yet because they're not finished destroying the old one yet. So I'm saving that one. Spare egg boxes. Get people to give you egg boxes. Um, spare rolls. Boxes. Just any old boxes. You can punch holes in them and they make lovely nests. So these ones I'm saving. These were delicious actually. They were awesome. Um, monkey nuts. And all sorts of goodies there. So it's quite handy having a unit. I'm, I'm going to upgrade to a Detolf unit soon as a mouse cage. It's actually an IKEA unit, which is going to lie flat on here and just take up all of that. And you can get other units that fit nicely underneath it. This is also an IKEA unit that somebody gave me a few years ago. And it's supposed to be a TV unit. As you can see, it's uh, very, very useful for mouse cages and mouse things. Ah, I'm going to show you something else I've got here. This is a digital thermometer, which I believe you can change to Fahrenheit as well. I think there's a button on it somewhere that you can do for that. Uh, I've got it set to Celsius. Uh, it's got a long wire and a probe. Now, obviously, you don't want the wire to be anywhere near where the mice can get it, so you don't want this in the cage. But this is really important to make sure that they don't overheat, especially in the uh, summer. So I can keep tabs on how warm the room is and how warm it is. So all I'm going to do is have this near the cages. It doesn't have to be inside. Uh, I also have these, actually I think it's supposed to be aquarium for all things on the outside. Unfortunately they don't really work very well, so I don't rely on those. Uh, this is a present for my lovely boyfriend. Um, so I can always keep a check on it. So 19, that's a good temperature, 20, 22, something like that. If it gets towards 23 and over, um, then you really want to be thinking about finding ways to cool the mice down. Now what I tend to do is, in the summer if it's really hot, is I will keep the windows open but the curtains closed. The curtains closed keeps the sun out of the room. Now my windows have got a clever little thing here where rather than being open like that, if you have to go out somewhere, you've got a gap there and that's actually locked. People cannot get in or out. It's open a jar, but it's locked at the same time, which is a good security measure. If you've got that on your windows, it's very useful. Um, I've also got the little circulating fan down there. Now, you don't want that aimed right at the mice, so it can cause a draft. Um, as long as it's in the room, moving the air around, that's good. As well as having the windows open at the front, 
Um, make sure you've got windows open somewhere else in the house as well so you get through flow of air and that helps keep everything cool. Okay, I'm going to mix up the master's water now. Uh, I'm also going to put some medicine because at the moment one of them's got respiratory infections, these antibiotics. But just I'm going to start with everything else. First of all, you want a measuring jug. Now, if you notice, it's got a bit of a funny colour. It's a bit sort of a caramelly golden colour. And that's because what we've got in here is uh, Dr. S Daily Essentials 1, which is a water soluble vitamin and mineral supplement. I get this from mattrations.com. You can see the price on there. It'll last a very long time. Now, this is a powder. You put a little pinch on, it's got the dosage uh, recommendations on the side. What I also have is Calcivet, uh, again from ratrations.com, and that helps support the bones because uh, mice and rats do have a uh, higher so calcium requirement. You'll make sure they're getting enough. Now what I've got here is an alcohol-free vanilla extract. You do not want to use a vanilla essence that's got alcohol in it because alcohol can be very dangerous for them. This one I found in France. Um, my parents are out there, so I get a few bottles every time I go out. Uh, also one brings them back for me. Now this will last a long time, so you literally just put like a drop or two in. Now the reason for that is it actually helps reduce the odour in the urine. It really, really works. It's fantastic stuff. Uh, the bottles I've got with the Rotostack system are quite small. These are 50 millilitres. Um, so I just tend to mix everything up in the jug. I need a funnel to fill the jug up. And obviously I can't do this one-handed, so I'm going to stop recording now. Okay, a little bit more about water bottles now. Uh, the first thing about water bottles is you want to make sure you clean them really thoroughly each time. Now, to do that, you need to get a bottle brush because um, otherwise uh, nasty things can build up. So you want to make sure you're scrubbing inside the nozzles, uh, inside there with hot soapy water, as hot as you can stand, and then rinse it out many times of clean, plain water. So that's my little bottle brush. Found it on eBay. You're going to need one of them. Now, lots of people have said uh, that Rotostack bottles have got a bad reputation for leaking. Now, I've never, ever had a problem with leaking. And it's all down to technique. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how to use the water bottles so they don't leak. First thing, when you fill them, make sure, obviously, the lid's on tight. And then you want to wipe down all the outside of the bottle with a kitchen roll. Next thing, over the sink, turn upside down. Give it a shake. You can see water's coming out. The bubbles have gone to the top. Now, the important thing is keep it this way up. I'm just going to do one, because I've got two hands. Keep it that way up all the way to the cage. You do not want that water bubble, the air bubble, to get to the nozzle. If you do that, you break the airlock, it's got going on, and it'll leak. Do this, it will never leak, I promise you. Unless there's a fault with the bottle, which I've never had in any of my bottles. So you want to you kind of see here, there's like a twisting motion here. There's uh, two lugs on it, and the gap. See, the bubble is still at the top. Twist it. Done. There you go. No drips. Okay, all finished. Uh, now we're just going to do a final check before we put the mice in. Got all the water bottles on. So one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, all the clips are on. You want to make sure all of the clips are on and secure. So everything's got clips on. These are the long clips that go from the bars of this up and over to this. Uh, these are the shorter clips here that only go from the base to there. They will not stretch from there to there. Again, it's something you can find easily on eBay. You want to make sure you've got plenty of both. If you try and make one of these go from there to there, A, it'll probably ping off across the room. B, sometimes they can snap, so you really do not want to force them. I speak from experience, trust me on this. So this is all ready for me to go back in again. Now, the three mice... Um, it's going to be two weeks before I use mucking out again. Uh, to be honest, it really could go longer. Um, I just don't like to. And yes, it looks complicated, but the enjoyment of mice is what's important and they absolutely love it. It really keeps them entertained and that's the important thing.